This is ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. I want to enjoy the freedom to go and do as everybody else does and not stay locked up in the mental prison that I built for myself. Our servicemen and women in need of mental health care issues, high suicide rates are plaguing our veteran community, but now the VA is offering new help. We'll show you what's being done to identify vets at risk and get them the support which could save their lives. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohn, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on veteran suicide and prevention efforts coming up. But first, our top seven stories at seven. And we begin in Sarasota. The opioid epidemic stretches from one end of the state to the other, but it's hit the Sun Coast the hardest, which is why Governor Rick Scott came here today to sign a new law aimed at addressing the rampant opioid crisis. Under the new law, the synthetic opioid fentanyl is now classified as a scheduled one narcotic. It is now a first degree felony to possess 10 grams or more of the drug. Fentanyl is considered 100 times more more potent than morphine and is directly linked to the rising number of overdoses. Under the law, those dealing the drug can now be charged with murder if a customer overdoses. Having this in effect makes it clear, it makes it prima facie evidence. If a drug dealer deals fentanyl, heroin, or a derivative to somebody, we can identify who that drug dealer was who provided that derivative to that person who overdosed, we will charge them with murder. The new law goes into effect October 1st. A Sarasota couple is charged with animal cruelty tonight after sheriff's deputies say they failed to properly care for several horses. Benjamin and Wendy Watson were charged after deputies found three of four horses on their property on Windburn Place in Sarasota underweight. They tried working with the couple and had a veterinarian examine the horses and provide a feeding schedule to increase the animal's weight. But after a series of follow-up visits, deputies found the horses still without adequate food and water and still underweight. The horses are now being undergoing rehabilitation. A sheriff's de deputy is being mourned this week after he passed away from cancer over the weekend. A former Marine, Deputy Kevin Blakely, volunteered to help out at Ground Zero after 9-11, and it appears his prolonged exposure to the toxic pile resulted in his early death. He joined the sheriff's office 14 years ago, and in 2012 won an award for pulling a man from a burning car. When he went up to Boston um, and was treated, um, there was some talk, uh, you know, that, that this type of cancer is most likely due to the exposures that um, many first responders um, came into contact with at uh, the 9-11 site. Deputy Blakely is survived by his wife and two children. New developments on the Sarasota family lost at sea last year. Florida Fish and Wildlife investigators are releasing these never before seen photos of the family's boat before and after it sunk. Last June, Ace Kimberly and his three teenage children left Sarasota Bay for Fort Myers. There were high seas and they, were nev they never made it to their destination. Ace's body was found along with the body of his daughter, Rebecca. His two sons, Roger and Donnie, remain missing. Items found with the ship's wreckage include a burnt signal flare. The Atlanta Braves are moving their spring training to Northport in 2019, but the city commission is questioning if it will get a good return on its investment in the team. Commissioners have committed to paying $300,000 over the next 30 years for the stadium and training facilities. Now they are asking staff to conduct a study on the employment and economic impact of having the Braves here. While commissioners are wavering on the investment, the Chamber of Commerce says similar studies have produced promising results. All the different groups, Sarasota County, Major League Baseball, have done studies around this all around the state. And it has shown that it has brought in more money than any expenses that could occur bringing a spring training team in. The results of the study could impact Northport City budget going forward. An update on the effort to repair and fund the Venice Fire Department. The City Council is proving the first step in imposing a new fire fee. It would require residents to pay up to $100 more annually in taxes. For years, the Fire Department has struggled due to a lack of resources. Council members say a tax hike will help restore quality first responder service to the island. We have scarce resources, and at this particular time, uh, we've decided that we really need to reinvest in the fire department. They need new equipment, 
um, and they have, been, they have been ignored for a couple of years. The city also plans to lower the millage rate to help defer the added costs for the fire department. County commissioners in Sarasota are responding to complaints about congestion at the nation's number one beach, Siesta Key. In the last three years, 178 new parking spots were added to the beach. However, most beachgoers say it is not nearly enough. Today, commissioners discuss possible solutions, including adding a parking garage and making parking paid. Commissioners are waiting for input from the public before moving forward. I guess we are a victim of our own success, Bob. Yeah, that happens, doesn't it? Uh, you got to keep up with it, I guess. And uh, we are looking at uh, not the best beach weather right now, Alan, especially on Lombo Key. Uh, heavy showers uh, now moving uh, west into the Gulf of Mexico, containing some heavy rainfall. There's been no severe weather around, and it's raining near Lido as well. And just around Siesta Key, some light rainfall from Osprey northward. You can see that uh, the activity continues to push off to the west. And even into Cortez, they had a little bit of rainfall earlier. That is, again, west of that and moving into the Gulf. Other storms, though, interestingly enough, are starting to uh, actually backbuild east of where it's already rained. So light rain occurring near Lakewood Ranch, the rainfall rate uh, one inch an hour, that's with the cell that has moved offshore now. And yesterday we were talking two and a half to three inch an hour of cells. So the rainfall intensity not nearly as strong as it was. Mayaka City, you're getting a moderate rain shower right now. Rainfall rates haven't been all that impressive, but some of the estimates are 3.1 inches just to the east of Parish and northeast Manatee County. That's where several surface boundaries kind of came together and really created a big storm there. 1.8 near Inglewood. Inglewood also had nickel size hail right around 435. And Wachula getting about an inch of rainfall there. Currently, looking at the Sarasota Bay, we see the heat index has dropped. That's the nice benefit of these afternoon showers. It's uh, now 74 degrees, humidity 87%. We have an east wind at 10. It's uh, raining with a thunderstorm near the airport. The pressure 3010, and that is rising. Temperatures have cooled everywhere. So after highs today, we're in the low 90s. Temperatures down to the mid to upper 70s. That's, again, one of the best parts of these afternoon storms is the cooling weather in the evening. Okay, thanks a lot, Bob. And still to come, after they return home from the front lines, many veterans fight a different battle at home, but now the VA is trying to improve mental health care and lower the rates of suicides. We'll have the latest on the local effort when we return. If you want 24-7 access to ABC 7's breaking news stories, weather forecasts, traffic alerts, health reports, Suncoast View, and more ABC 7 programming, now there's good news. Introducing the free ABC 7 channel on Amazon Fire TV. Your 24-7 access to ABC 7. Just search ABC 7 on the streaming device and download the free ABC 7 channel app. Or if you don't have an Amazon Fire TV, you can get one at Amazon.com. Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. Upon payment of your new lower balance, your debt will finally shrink until you are debt free. My family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. So call now. Make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Resolve your debt. Call 800-685-6422. 800-685-6422. Warehouse. Summer clearance. Get your free $100 gift certificate to the first 100 customers who purchase $500 or more. And pay no interest for one full year with same-day pickup or next-day delivery. This special purchase seven-piece set, now $3.99. This dual reclining sofa with drop-down table and cup holders in beige or brown, $4.99. This Florida white bedroom set, $5.99. At the Furniture Warehouse in Sarasota, Bradenton, Venice, Port Charlotte, and Ellington. And save big. 
Have you ever wondered what it's like to save a life? Find out by donating platelets at Suncoast Blood Bank. I'm Haley Wilgus, ABC7. Platelets aid in the clotting process and are vital in the treatment of cancer and surgical patients, trauma victims, and critically ill newborns. It's tough to keep enough on the shelves because they only last five days. To donate, call this number or visit scbb.org and you can help save a life. ABC7 congratulates Suncoast Blood Bank on 65 years of serving our community. The official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. Download yours today. We're really good at waving the flag and boasting how much we honor and respect those who risk and sacrifice their lives to fight for our country. We haven't always been so good at looking after veterans when they come home. Tonight, Jacqueline Matter reports on a new effort to deal with the alarming number of veterans taking their own lives. Kim Gillespie is just one of nearly a million veterans living on the Sun Coast, not getting the mental health they need. I didn't know what was wrong with me. A recent study by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration shows that only half of returning vets who need mental health care receive services. The battle they're fighting? Stigma. USA! Something the Bay Pines VA healthcare system chief of mental health says they're constantly working to break. It is easier for me to say that I have chest pain and cardiac disease than for me to say that I have depression, that I'm not feeling well, and that I think um, everything is hopeless and uh, it's better off to die. Some 22,000 vets used mental health services at Bay Pines VA last year. Clinicians screen vets for depression, PTSD, substance abuse, and suicide, which has become the VA secretary's top clinical priority after numbers have skyrocketed in recent years. It doesn't spare anybody. We all know somebody who knows somebody or a friend or a family member or a colleague that has gone through suicide. As more and more veterans come forward with their mental health issues, Bay Pines has now implemented a new program called ReachVet, which started three months ago. Identifies the top 0.1% of veterans at risk just by reviewing the health, the health records of these veterans. So what happens when we identify these veterans? These names are provided to the clinicians so they can re-engage those particular veterans or enhance the care of those particular veterans to minimize the risk of suicide. Still, Carino says nearly 70% of veterans are not getting assistance from the VA. Some of the patients are not returning to care. Um, they choose to cancel an appointment, let's say. So by identifying these veterans, we have the providers and the staff reach out to them and re-engage them into care. Which is exactly what happened for Army veteran Kim Gillespie after missing an appointment with her primary care doctor. Once they assessed me in mental health, they realized that I need it in patient care. The former communications specialist was sexually assaulted while serving overseas in Germany. After that incident, she got out, returned home, and became detached from her family. She decided moving to Florida was her next best option, but the trauma of her attack soon took its toll. The self-medication increased. Uh, I was inconsistent at work. I couldn't keep relationships. I started having encounters with law enforcement. So overall, my life really started to spin and spiral out of control. After months of isolation and barricading herself in her apartment, the battle she was fighting brought her to her darkest moment. Not knowing what was wrong with me. The only end result at that time I could see was taking my own life. It's a thought many veterans go through. In fact, nearly 22 veterans a day commit suicide. Bay Pines Suicide Prevention Team uses analytic tools, outpatient care, and education in hopes of reducing that number to zero. It didn't matter whether it was 20 veterans a day or three veterans a day or two veterans a day uh, that committed suicide. One is too many. The specialized programs at Bay Pines also include daily schedules filled with classes like trauma education, anger management, and coping skills. Gillespie says those classes have helped her gain a better understanding of what she suffers from. The VA uh, with a team is the one thing that I really differentiate from any place else that I could go. It's not just one doctor here, it's a team of doctors even from nutrition to rec therapy to spiritual guidance. If 
that's something that you choose to help get my life on the right track. Being on that right track is where Carino says you can help. He says engaging someone when they're hopeful can be the difference between life or death. In one moment, you have an in, really an intent of really ending your life. But it may be that with some intervention, that turns around at that moment again, and you postpone it and you say, no, no, not now, maybe later. That's the opportunity that we have. After six months in treatment, Gillespie says she's heading home, now knowing how to cope and take life one step at a time. I'm excited. I'm a little fearful, uh, but I know I'm not going home alone. I know the VA is also going home with me. I know in my heart <clears throat> the change that I want to be <clears throat> today is totally opposite of who I was before. In St. Petersburg, Jacqueline Matter, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Coming up, an incredible panel from the Veterans Administration to a vet on the front lines of helping others and a watchdog dedicated to getting vets the services they deserve. Stay with us. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi. I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. That is a pretty good breakfast. You're not even eating. Not hungry. No? Why not? What's up? Kath and I knew that Jenny had been partying a bit. Found out she tried heroin. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. I am a veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. I am powerful beyond my wildest imagination. I will define my future. I will keep challenging myself to improve because I am a future leader of this great nation. I will make a difference in my community. I will not settle for simply chasing my dreams, I will achieve them. Because I was given a chance. An opportunity. At Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America. The ultimate leadership experience. Join us, we'll build a new future together. There was a time not all that long ago that suicides among veterans of the Gulf War were a dirty little secret that no one liked to talk about. I remember as a reporter covering a rash of veteran suicides in another state, no one seemed to know what to do, most especially the VA. Today, an estimated 20 veterans commit suicide every day, but now the Veterans Administration is engaged in an aggressive program. It is called ReachVet. It is designed to identify vets at risk for suicide and mental illness and provide preemptive care and support. And joining us for more on veteran suicide prevention is Jerry Zivick, a government benefits consultant and consumer watchdog. Brian Jacobs, a Navy veteran and founder of the local organization Vets to Chefs. And Patricia Frederick, a suicide prevention coordinator at Bay Pines VA healthcare system. Thank you all for uh, joining us. And, and Brian, let me start with you because I remember talking to Vietnam veterans who said back in the day when they left the service, they, you know, the, the military shook their hand and said good luck, goodbye, and that's all they got. Um, when you came out of the service, was it different? And, and how many vets do you know out there who really kind of need help that most people don't really understand? 
you know, when I got out, um, it was it was unique. Um, I had just recently gotten back from a combat zone, actually, Where? Um, uh, from Iraq. I was in the Anbar province in 2005, and uh, we had just, uh, you know, kind of done a quick change of command, and uh, I was actually on my way back for orders. And I basically had a choice to make. I could get back, and within seven days, I would be out of the Marine Corps, or I would go back. And, uh, you know, so you had seven days to transition direct from a combat zone. And this was kind of a situation of you, if you're in, you're in, if you're out, goodbye. And, uh, it, and unfortunately, it's a, it's a tough process. I mean, TAPS, the Transitional Assistant Program, it, it does wonders for what it does. It does give you some insight, but there's, you know, if you think about the military, they take so much time to develop a Marine or develop a sailor or a soldier. I mean, boot camps are, you know, 10 to 12 weeks long but there's not that same emphasis put on getting out. It's like a screeching stop right. from zero to 60. Patricia, I, I mean, we have a lot to discuss, but is there a, a newer realization at the VA that that's what's happening to, to vets and that um, there has to be more awareness that as soon as men and women come out of the service, they, they need at least some kind of screening or, or yes. help? I think uh, the VA would like for those who are leaving service to come to the VA as soon as possible, enroll, begin to see what services you're interested in being a part of, so that in the future, if you decide you've started off with just medical care and then you see that something's going on in your life and it needs treatment, you c it's very easy to just transition right into mental health care. Jerry, from the veteran's point of view, do, do veterans I don't want to say have a responsibility to figure out what services that they're going to need or what are out there. Um, you know, I mean, do the majority of veterans just don't know? Does the VA, in terms of a com you know a consumer level, do a, a good enough job to to let vets know they're there for them? I think there's a mutual responsibility on the part of the VA and on the part of the vet to meet with each other and talk with each other. I've read studies that have said. The first four weeks after you're discharged are the most crucial weeks for a veteran. And I think the VA has recognized this now more and they're reaching out more. And, but I don't think they were very good at finding vets that wanted to be lost. But as Brian actually, we were talking before, if a vet wants to hide, you can't find them. You have to make yourself available to be found. Okay, we are just getting started with this really important conversation and we will pick it up right after we check on the weather. All hands on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point your way. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you and for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! <laughs> Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're going to find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. the call of duty and left our homes to serve in far off lands. Now we answer another call, this time at home, in our own communities, to respond in times of chaos, to use our strength, our skills, and our experiences 
to bring hope amid devastation and destruction. Together, as a team of brothers and sisters, we're continuing our mission to make this country a little stronger and a little better each day. We are Team Rubicon. Our discussion of veteran suicide and prevention continues in a moment, but right now let's get a check on our forecast from Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Well, the rain has been coming down heavy in places, and this is an interesting shot from Justin Stansel, Beer Can Island, right across the, uh, the bay right there with an interesting rain coming down at times and even lightning strikes. We saw some with our tower cam right there in the middle of Sarasota Bay. This from Casey Key webcam. Again, the seas have been rather calm, uh, but once the storms move over there, the waves will start to pick up a little bit, so mariners beware. There have been a couple of marine advisories out this afternoon, uh, stretching from Inglewood northward all the way up into the Tampa Bay area. The rain is still around into Hillsborough County, stretching down into Hardy and DeSoto counties, although it's a weakening there and lessening. The heavy rain by far is in the Manatee at this hour. Some areas are already getting two inches of rain. We had a brief but heavy storm move through Longboat Key just about a half hour ago. That is cleared, but there's more on the way. This is a light to moderate rain, though. It's not the heavy rain that you would normally get with the afternoon and evening variety of storms. At first, it's the follow-up, and uh, it's a rather large area of light to moderate rain that continues to move off toward the west-northwest. Lakewood Ranch, raining along I-75, all the way up to State Road 64 near Parrish and Ellington, and even into uh, Bradenton. Uh, not much now at Bayshore Gardens, but more is on, on the way, as I alluded to, as a result of that southeasterly wind flow. Even a few lightning strikes, too. Even though the rain may not be all that intense, there's still a potential for some lightning out there, so be advised of that if you're going outdoors this evening. Well, the satellite imagery is showing a frontal boundary located to our north. We have the typical afternoon and evening variety of storms here. And this is a tropical wave, which promises to increase our rain chances a little bit on Thursday and Friday. And it looks like uh, we will see maybe a little less action tomorrow in advance of this, but by the time it gets here on Thursday and Friday, there's a better chance for some more widespread rain and the potential for some uh, heavier storms too in terms of uh, intensity. And you can see that area right there moving off toward the west. That's the remnant low of what was a tropical depression. 74 degrees right now, the heat index not much of a factor because of the rain cool there. We have an east wind at 10, the pressure 3010. And that continues to rise now. The high today was 92. That's a couple degrees above average for voters tomorrow. East winds at 5 to 10 knots. We really never really get that sea breeze going. So it'll stay out of the east throughout the day, I think. For the most part, seas running 1 to 2 feet with a light chop out there. The water temperature now at 90 degrees. And the beaches will see a high right around 89. The extended forecast shapes up like this. We have a 40% chance for scattered afternoon storms tomorrow. And then the rain chance picks up to 60% on Again, Thursday and Friday. Al will be back with his guests right after this. Stick around. Call to see if you qualify to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan right now. At Humana, we believe great things are ahead of you when you start with healthy. And part of staying healthy means choosing the right Medicare plan. Humana can help. With original Medicare, you're covered for hospital stays and doctor office visits when you're sick. But keep in mind, you'll have to pay a deductible for each. A Medicare supplement plan can cover your deductibles and coinsurance, but you may pay higher premiums than you do with other plans, and prescription drug coverage isn't included. But with an all-in-one Humana Medicare Advantage plan, you could get all that coverage plus Part D prescription drug benefits, all for an affordable monthly plan premium, and in some areas, no plan premium. It's all described in this free book in DVD. Call for yours and discover how an all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan from Humana could save you money. Call 1-800-558-8779. Summer clearance. Get your free $100 gift certificate to the first 100 customers who purchase $500 or more. And pay no interest for one full year with same-day pickup or next-day delivery. This special purchase seven-piece set, now $3.99. This dual reclining sofa with drop-down table and cup holders in beige or brown, $4.99. This Florida white bedroom set, $5.99. At the Furniture Warehouse in Sarasota, Bradenton, Venice, Port Charlotte, and Ellington. And save it. My name is Stephen Jaffe. Law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. 
It's summer on the Sun Coast, and you know what that means. It's Friday Fest season, and you're invited. Hi, I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Jacqueline Matter. Join ABC7 at the Van Wazel on July 21st when Kettle of Fish takes the stage to perform their high-energy mix of blues, soul, and funk. We'll be there. Join us for great food, friends, and fun. For more information, call this number. Or go to mysuncoast.com slash FridayFest. Presented by Kettle Automotive and Cool Today. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are discussing the rate of veteran suicide and what is being done locally to respond to the crisis. Our guests tonight are Jerry Zivick, a government benefits consultant and consumer watchdog, Brian Jacobs, a Navy veteran and founder of Vets to Chefs. We want to ask him about that in a few minutes. And Patricia Frederick, the suicide prevention coordinator at Bay Pines VA Healthcare System. And, and Patricia, I wanted to start with you because uh, during the break, you, you know, we, I talked about the the travel the VA has been in terms of recognizing this as an important issue. And, and you say over the last 10 years, the VA has really um, really learned and grown in terms of, of, of how it handles veterans and mental health issues. Absolutely. The VA has put in place programs that are designed to really reach out to the veterans and really help them to get access to care. And all staff are trained to look for signs and signals of suicide risk and all of the providers are doing screening, risk assessment, safety planning with the veterans so that there's a better chance the veteran has the tools to know how to help themselves. Is funding adequate? I really can't speak to that, but I certainly do wish that we had more staff available. Congressman, if you're listening, um, tomorrow night you're holding a, a town hall. Yes. What's the purpose? The purpose of the town hall is to bring in the community and veterans to tell us what they're thinking, how can we all work better um, at, together to help to address issues related to suicide. We all know that this is a critical issue in our country as well as with veterans, and the VA is very clear that one, one suicide is too many. And we're, they, we want to know how can we work with the community to help solve this. Uh, of course, the VA and what it does is only one part Correct. of this issue here. And Brian, you run an organization uh, that is called uh, Vets to Chefs. What is that? Uh, you know, Vets to Chef is, it's all about giving passion and purpose to a veteran's life through food and brew, um, as I say. Um, as I tell most people, you know, food found me uh, when I decided that I needed a place in, in this world. Um, I had gone through so many jobs. I had gone through actually 22 jobs. I sold insurance. I mowed lawns. I was selling air conditioners in a place that you really didn't need air conditioning. I mean, I, I was doing anything to make a dollar. And I had just latched on to something that had really found, found me in the, my darkest times, and that was food. And, you know, food brings people together. Food gives you an opportunity to be creative, to be artistic, to be insightful, to be passionate, and you can never stop learning about it. And it's something to me that has kind of really resonated deep from, you know, going even back overseas is the best times of your life was sitting down, even opening an MRE bag with uh, your, your brother Marines. I mean, it was something, it could be Christmas, New Year's, you didn't care, you were just happy to be able to break bread. It's, it almost seems like what you're saying is cathartic. Yes. Uh, Jerry, I, what as a community are we doing to make it easier for veterans to find the services that they need. I mean, you're a great consumer watchdog, but there, there's not a Jerry Civic on every corner. Well, I think a show like this is very helpful. I think reaching out to friends and saying, hey, watch this show upon, on suicide prevention and tell a friend about this. I think that is really critical. I think we all owe a debt to veterans. The sacrifice they made, the risk they made, and we as citizens have to look out for this, look out for our vets every day, a and it's critical to us. We we have to be aware that there's a, a crisis hotline number. We have to be aware that there's a crisis text number. We have to be aware you can go online and, and have a chat w with somebody. Because if we see somebody that's struggling, we should reach out and help them. The thought occurs to me is, you know, Bay Pines is an incredible facility, and from what I understand, you're opening a new mental health center up there that is going to be the state of the art. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable, and that's all well and fine if you're a veteran in need of help in, in the Tampa Bay area. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have a, a huge state here, a rural state, and a lot of veterans live in it, and, uh, you know, uh, Brian, are, you have first-hand experience of what happens in terms of a vet who lives 
maybe not out in the middle of nowhere, but close to it and doesn't have this kind of facility right near them? Well, you know, it's, uh, it is, and it's, a, it's one of those things that's, uh, you know, I, I look at the care I get from the VA here, and it's, it, is, it really is wonderful. I mean, I get taken care of. I can call the VA hotline when I need, and I can go to an appointment immediately. And there's, but when you live in an area um, such as my younger brother did, uh, in the middle of uh, nowhere in Georgia, when I mean, it was middle of nowhere, it was a dirt road. It was far. It was beaten off. It was off the beaten path. It was his way of dealing with life. And uh, you sit in your thoughts, and you sit in your mind. And at this point in his life, he decided that his life was no more of value. And uh, we lost him uh, three years ago on Memorial Day weekend. And it's, uh, you know, it's one of the big factors of starting Vet the Chef is, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't reach him. I couldn't reach out to him the way I wanted to make an impact in his life. And I, and I am going to make that difference now. I'm going, you know, the great thing is, is that we have a great community here that's making that impact. You know, the new, the new programs, but it's about putting the word out and having the community sponsor get involved in programs. Patricia, what can the VA do? I mean, you, you could, what you're doing here in our area is fantastic, but there is a nationwide debate over how to handle veterans who are, do, do not live this close to well, major VA centers. Well, but there's also a, a nationwide network of suicide prevention teams in every single VA who are responsible for all of the smaller clinics that are affiliated with VAs as well. So the coordination among suicide prevention providers throughout the country it goes on every day. And, and I, you know, I could address this to all of you, but I know from my years of reporting on veterans' issues, what you were saying about your brother um, is not dissimilar to what a lot of Vietnam veterans here in Florida experienced, that they, some of them actually lived in the middle of the Everglades mm -hmm. because it reminded them of Vietnam, but um, it was because of the PTSD. And, you know, is that part of the equation that our system is able to deal with? Yeah. Uh, I think, and I, I'm sure Patricia will, will agree with this, it's not just the PTSD, it's called polytrauma. We have the PTSD, you ha you, and you have the substance abuse, and, and you have the depression. Those three factors, when brought together, that, that's the biggest cause of, of suicide mm -hmm. with, right. with veterans. But I, I do want to address something, and not to be a naysayer here, but the VA does, is, is working really hard in, in the, since the, the last quarter of 2016. I, I feel that it's really worked really hard. But just because Brian's brother lived off the grids, there's no excuse wherever any veteran lives in the United States that they should get second class treatment. And, and that's actually one of the problems with the crisis hotline. They, they had the one crisis center in New, New York, so they expanded it to, to, to Atlanta. But while they were expanding it, they didn't have enough staff in, in New York. So, when the, so there's been a study that when callers would call in on crisis, they would go to, to a secondary holding a busy center and get a busy signal, get, and, and they weren't treated correctly, and there's no reason that there should ever well, be a second I, class I guess, treatment. I, What's the answer to that, plus the fact when, uh, when these issues are talked about in Congress, I often hear members of Congress say, well, the answer to that is to allow veterans to get private health care that's paid for by the government. Uh, is that the answer, Patricia? I, I think when uh, the VA can offer evidence-based treatment that has been um, researched and analyzed and is designed to be effective, and, and that's really invaluable, and you can't always find that in the community. Wow. Let's take a quick break, and when we return, we'll have final thoughts from our guests, plus what some of our viewers are saying about last night's topic, local tax dollars funding charter schools. It's fine that other people like you. It's more important that you like yourself. And I'm comfortable with every part of me. Meals on wheel coming to my door as someone who's housebound assures me that I'm not forgotten. They care that I'm okay. My name is Asha Ida Bell. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Are you a soccer mom or dad? Regardless of their age or experience level, when your kids play soccer or any other sport, there's one person on the sideline who is key to help recognize and seek medical care for sports-related concussion. It's you. 
You need to know the signs and symptoms of concussion, and you need to act if you think your child has been injured. Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. To learn more, go to cbc.gov concussion. 1001, 1002, 1003, Absolutely. There's been a study that shows that there's been an 8% increase in suicide for veterans that have been treated at the VA. However, for veterans that have not been treated at the VA, it's almost a 33% increase in suicides. So if you want empirical data that you need to go to the VA, there it is. Patricia, you know, with the end of the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, there are so many more veterans, new veterans, coming into the system. Uh, is the VA at Bay Pines uh, able to accommodate them? I know you're building and building up there, but uh, are you? We is there think we are. We we would like the veteran to come and to begin to get engaged in care. Yes, we feel we're ready to receive the veterans. And, and Brian, what can you say again to the people here in the Sarasota community? Uh, there are so many veterans in our community here, uh, retired vets um, and p new vets coming in. Uh, your program is incredible, but. Is there enough programs like that around here? No, there isn't. And you know, this is something that we you know myself and a, a lot of the great sponsorship here in the local veteran community have thought about is that, you know, how do you impact more? How do you make a bigger impact? And it's you know, it needs to be really looked at as more of a reintegration. And it's wonderful what the VA is doing, it's wonderful what these organizations are doing, but what's the next steps? What's the follow through on the care? That's kind of where I feel like a lot of the, the shortcomings are, is that we treat veterans, we give them opportunity, we find ways for them to deal with it, but this is long-term care. You know, I love, I love going out to a good event where I love seeing my doctor, but you know, if I had nothing really to positively put my, my mind into and, and search for every day and use for better, then I'm, where am I really gone? What have I really treated when I go home and sit? And it's going through organizations like reintegration programs like Vet to Chef and the other programs that we're supporting, like Vet to Brew, the Vet to Agro, the Vet to Bees, giving passion and purpose through something you can find a love for to find a love back into this world. And that's where the VA and the other local community sponsors need to come together is find those next steps of treatment. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you all for being here tonight. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of our viewers are saying about last night's topic, funding charter schools. Under a new sweeping education bill signed into law by Governor Rick Scott, school districts across Florida are required to give around 7% of local tax dollars to charter schools. Proponents say these schools deserve funding, while opponents say it will hurt the quality of public schools. And here's what some of you are saying. Michael Eliason writes, the legislature seems to find things to do with our tax dollars that we didn't ask for and refuses to do the things we voted for. Why are they called representatives? Doreen Starkey writes, when did we vote on this? Don't think the taxpayers get vote to vote on hardly anything anymore. But Rihanna Madison writes, I think it's fair that the money is shifted a bit 
Think about it, charter schools, pa parents pay taxes too. Charter schools are public schools. Well, what do you think about the rate of veteran suicides? What more can be done for our servicemen and women who are in need of mental health care? Join tonight's conversation by visiting our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. And FYI, you can watch past discussions. They're available on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Thanks to all our guests for being here tonight. Jerry Zivick is a government benefits consultant and consumer watchdog. Brian Jacobs is a Navy veteran and founder of the local organization Vets to Chefs. And Patricia Frederick is the suicide prevention coordinator at the Bay Pines VA Healthcare System. When we return, the U.S. economy added hundreds of thousands of jobs last month, but despite the growth, wagers, wages are not keeping up. We'll explain how it's happening with ABC7 business commentator Richard Stern. Plus, billions of dollars in assets left unclaimed. Florida is trying to help residents reclaim their property. We'll have the details in our primetime headlines. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 1-800-764-8708. That's 1-800-764-8708. And we're the Marvelous Wonderettes. Mr. Experience the best girl group songs from the 50s and 60s live on stage at the Players Center July 12th through the 23rd. Call 941-365-2494 or visit us at theplayers.org. You'll fall in love with the Marvelous Wonderettes. I'm so alone. Invest in Kids is a $7.5 million project to build a new Boys and Girls Club in South Manatee County. I'm Caleb Grimes, and I was a club kid. It's where I learned important life lessons, leadership, integrity, responsibility, and baseball. Thousands of kids attend the Boys and Girls Clubs, and after years of use, their club is slowly falling apart. Help us invest in kids. Make your donation today. Welcome back. If you're just looking at the numbers, the U.S. jobs report is strong. 222,000 jobs were added in June. However, even as unemployment drops, wages are remaining relatively the same. What's causing this? Joining us for a look at the market is ABC7 business commentator Richard Stern. It's really interesting. Uh, 222,000, uh, that's a good number for a monthly Very jobs good. report. But you had somebody who is uh, the vice president of Manpower North America says, we have not seen this Unemployment drop, low participation rates, and wages not move. That tells you there is something not right in the jobs market. Any idea what that might be? Well, I think what the numbers tell you is that there are more jobs, but the fact that wages aren't going up means that the new jobs that have been created are clearly on the low end of the pay scale. And therefore, you do have more people working, but the wage scale doesn't go any higher. And uh, obviously, that's very problematic. And not only that, as you said, some of the jobs are lower wage jobs, $10 an hour. Uh, there was, you know, talk about the distribution center, which is like Amazon is popping up all over Florida. Uh, but, you know, another analyst says you have these distribution centers on the outskirts of town. You need a car to get there and you're not going to have a car for a $10 an hour job. And I think that's very real. The question is, uh, are these people willing to take an entry-level job in hopes that they can work their way to a higher job, whether it's within that corporation or somewhere else? Because, as you know, the hard job is the first one. Once you got the first job, then you can work your way up the work scale and the pay scale. So a lot of people are going to take those jobs in hopes that they can work their way higher. But middle income salaries are not going up either. Uh, that's been a, a trend that's gone over decades. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people who are watching us right now 
who are your hardworking, working class families who are struggling to pay their monthly bills and forget about saving for retirement or their kids' college education, why aren't those job salaries going up? Because corporations are very, very conscious of their bottom lines. Almost every company, and there's an exception, I'm sure, but almost every company is trying to be lean and mean and keep their expenses as low as they can so that, guess what? When they come out with quarterly earnings, and we're going to start to see a whole series of quarterly earnings reports in the next couple of weeks, they want the bottom line to be better than it was last quarter and better than it was well, last year. One, one last question. Isn't that kind of self-defeating because if middle income and working class Americans are struggling so much, consumer spending is not going to go up to sustain those companies? I think you're absolutely right. What, they're, what a lot of people are seeing, of course, is that the people on the higher end of the wage spectrum, continue to spend, continue to invest, continue to really help the economy grow. And if there's anything that can be done, whether it's a tax cut for middle income people, anything that can help that middle income strata is certainly going to help the overall economy, jobs, sales, you name it. All right, Richard, thank you very much. Richard Stern is the business commentator for ABC 7 News. He joins us every other week for a check on the market. Your primetime headlines are coming up right after this break. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Florida's coral reefs are declining. Bad news for our oceans and marine life. Fortunately, you can help, and you don't have to dive, you just have to drive. When you purchase Moat's Protect Our Reefs license plate, $25 goes directly to Moat Marine Laboratory, whose research, restoration, and conservation programs are helping this precious natural resource thrive once again. So get your Moat Protect Our Reefs license plate today. You just might hold the key to saving Florida's reefs. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. I took my first handful of pills, and that's when all my priorities seemed to change. He would ask to use the bathroom in other people's homes. He just assumed that they would have medication. He'd go in their medicine cabinets and steal prescription drugs. I wish I knew really what these prescription pills were. We were so naive about the whole drug thing. These are all synthetic forms of heroin. Keep your medication locked up because you'll never notice that a pill is gone. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Designers do it with style. Tell me what's going on here. Because Why you don't like my hair? The Mark and Mandy Show. In-depth design ideas. What is up with the tuck tape here? Let's cover it up. Amazing beauty and fashion tips. So Halle Berry has amazing skin. She Her secret it. is coffee ground. No. Delicious recipes. Today I'm going to show you a special dish that is sure to please that special someone in your life. Watch the Mark and Mandy Show right here on your favorite channel. <laughs> Keep up with your investments and market trends by watching the ABC7 Stock Report. Get a recap of all the day's stock market activity. Be sure to watch your Suncoast News at 6 for the ABC7 Stock Report, sponsored by Sunset Cadillac. Now for your primetime headlines. Big developments this morning in that meeting between President Trump's top campaign staff and an influential Russian lawyer. Donald Trump Jr. releasing a chain of emails shedding new light on the nature of that meeting. ABC's Emily Rao has the latest from Washington. On its face, this is very problematic. The reaction rolling in Tuesday afternoon after Donald Trump Jr. released what he claims is the entire email chain leading up to the meeting last year with a Russian lawyer with reported ties to the Kremlin. Also at the meeting, then campaign manager Paul Manafort and Trump's brother-in-law, Jared Kushner. Earlier, Don Jr. said the two didn't know what the meeting was about, but these emails forwarded to Manafort and Kushner had a subject line that clearly states Russia Clinton. 
Kushner has a high-ranking position in the Trump administration. In the email, Rob Goldstone, the acquaintance who set up the meeting, writes, quote, This is obviously very high-level and sensitive information, but is part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump, end quote. The story unfolding as multiple investigations into possible ties between the Trump campaign and Russia continue. The investigation, it, it's not... Uh, nothing is proven yet, but it, we're, we're now beyond obstruction of justice in terms of what's being investigated. This is moving into perjury, false statements, uh, and even into potentially treason. Hillary Clinton's running mate upping the accusations while some Republicans are downplaying the frenzy. On. They're meeting with a foreign government. That's a whole different issue than meeting with an individual. Uh, I've got to find out all the facts on this to be able to see, but obviously it's a concern. Both sides agreeing Donald Jr. should be interviewed. And at the White House, Sarah Huckabee Sanders reading a short statement from the president. My son is a high-quality high person, and I applaud his transparency. Huckabee Sanders wouldn't answer any other questions about the issue. She referred all other inquiries to Donald Jr.'s attorney. Emily Rao, ABC News, Washington. Now the Mississippi, where 16 members of the military are dead after a plane crash. The KC-130 refueling plane had taken off from Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point in North Carolina. Witnesses heard a loud bang and then saw the plane corkscrew into a field, leaving debris over a five-mile area. Crackling noise. It was just something in it. You know, it was all over, it, but it was loud. It's just scary. It's just scary because after I seen all the black smoke. This is some, you know, it's horrifying. The investigation continues, but there is no indication of foul play. Florida's new chief financial officer is celebrating a record year for the state's division of unclaimed property. Last year, $313 million worth of unclaimed property was returned to rightful owners. More than 500,000 claims were made, and the average value of property return was about $600. The unclaimed property comes from abandoned safety deposit boxes, unclaimed financial assets, and deposit. Officials say you should check to see if any of your property is being held by the state. I would challenge anybody if you spend uh, 10 or 15 minutes on our free unlimited search database, you'll find either unclaimed property for yourself or some close family member or friend. More than $1.5 billion of assets remain unclaimed. You can check to see if any of it belongs to you by visiting fltreasurehunt.org. Dozens of total strangers working together to save a group of people from drowning in the Florida Panhandle. Beachgoers on the Panama City Beach notice a group of people in the water calling for help. Over the weekend, the swimmers got pulled out by rip currents, but before help could arrive, about 80 people formed a human chain and got them to shore. That's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Good night.